been good to Joe, even sometimes when he didn't deserve it. Ah, Joe's okay. He's just got it all bottled up. He used to say he don't have reasons. You might need a big favor. How much? Those are as good as they look. You could get uh, 10,000. Can we do it? You're watching me. Okay, tomorrow. Today. In a moment's notice, the day's top story can change. The weather can take a turn for the worst. And one score can lead to the upset of a lifetime. That's why Newsnet is working to bring you the latest throughout the day and into the night. With constant updates on developing stories and continuing coverage of the news that affects you. So be sure to join me, Wilmington Hernandez, every weeknight on Newsnet Evening Edition. Thank you. 
Social um, downtown during the River Festival. We don't know what time the ice cream social starts. Uh, traditionally, it's always been on the first Wednesday of River Fest. Um, I have one of those handy dandy brochures that tells me nothing. <laughs> there is nothing in here that gives a schedule of events or, or anything. So if any of our viewers know exactly when, what time the ice cream social starts, and if and indeed it is on Wednesday, uh, we would like for you to tell us that because um, then we'll know what time to be there. <laughs> or not. Yeah, well, it, it's so funny because, you know, these brochures have always been something you carry with you when you mm -hmm. go to the River Festival because it always had a schedule in it. Well, it doesn't. So there's no point in carrying it with you at the um, uh, River Festival. Now, it does say you can download the River Fest mobile app. I haven't done that yet, so that may be what I'll have to resort to. Maybe during the first break, I'll, I'll download the app and see, right. see if it'll tell me what, a schedule of events. But anyway, I'm Cheryl Matt. I'm Jenny Whitford. I'm Kimberly Garcia. And we're really glad to have you here. We're going to, uh, at, the, at the River Festival, or at the uh, Ice Cream Social, pardon me, we're going to uh, ask you to come up and talk to us. Uh, let us know what kind of topics you're interested in. Uh, give us a business card of yours if you have one. If you don't, then maybe just write down your name and, and phone number on a piece of paper and, and uh, give it to us. We'll probably do a drawing of some kind. We don't know what the prize is yet, so when we figure that out, we'll announce it. But um, we, don't want, we want to get to know our viewers and we figured that's one really good way to be, to get uh, close and personal. So, but that's ne I think that's next Wednesday. Like I said, if any of our viewers have a schedule of events for the uh, River Fest, let me know and let us know what time the ice cream social starts. So, because I don't want to miss it. <laughs> that's one of my favorite things in the world. <laughs> And I will have chocolate syrup there. <laughs> Yay. Because I always, I, it's vanilla ice cream. You cannot eat vanilla ice cream without chocolate syrup. We're going to have nuts. you gonna, you going to bring some? That's <laughs> 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 your job. I'm there. I am with that. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, it, uh, the, this um, brochure is probably the most worthless bit of paper I've ever seen. It, it tells you nothing. It absolutely tells you nothing. So um, I guess if you want to know what's going on at the Riverfest, you download the mobile app and uh, hopefully it will tell you something. But the River Fest is from uh, June 3rd to the 11th, and um, there's going to be lots of activities, we think. <laughs> don't know it by this, but we think there's going to be lots of activities, and um, so for those that would like to take part in them, 
you probably need to download the app or you won't know what to take part in. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the dentist yesterday. And this is something, this is a, a whole a, a program that I've started. I, I have neglected my dental health for a number of years because I knew how expensive it was and I knew I couldn't afford it. But now I have coverage and so I'm, it, it's limited coverage. It's only a couple of thousand dollars a year, but that's more coverage than I've had in the past. And so I found a dentist who is working with me and she's, she's really a sweetheart and she's working with me to try to get all my problems taken care of. And she, she gave me a plan. She, she put it down in, in paper, um, gave me the, a list of the things that, she, that needed to be done and the order that she would like to, to have them done in and gave me a, a, how much it was going to cost. And quite frankly, uh, I'm at the point now where I've used up all my benefits for this year, but I can start again next year. Well, I'm down to the point now where all I need is she's going to build me a partial mm -hmm. because I've got missing teeth down two on this side, two on this side. And so she's going to build me um, a partial but she has to, uh, she just pulled these teeth yesterday and I'm a little tender, my jaw's a little, uh, it's, sore is too strong a word, but it's, it's kind of a tightness, uh, it feels like a lot of pressure on my lower jaw and, um, but it's not, I mean my, my teeth aren't sore other than I, I can't chew, mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as I don't chew anything, I'm just fine. So I've been drinking a lot of shakes and eating cottage cheese and yogurt and <laughs> soft things, mm -hmm. jello, uh, soft things that I don't have to chew. And uh, so far, so That's good. good. I, I, you know, I, I told somebody else that there's one, more than one way to get back on my diet. <laughs> get a bunch of dental work done, you can't eat. <laughs> If you're hungry enough, you'll find a way to eat. Oh, uh, yeah, but it, but it has to be soft. Yeah, it yeah. has to be soft. So yeah, because I I tried chewing something earlier today. I said, well, that's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, but it, this is stuff that has been hanging fire for some time. It's it's needed to be done, and I just I just haven't had the money to do it and I haven't had insurance to cover it, so it just was being ignored. And um, I finally got to the point where I said, even I can't ignore it any longer, mm -hmm. it's, it's getting bad. So I, and I really love this dentist. She's, her name's uh, Barker, Dr. Kristen Barker, and she's right over here on North Emporia. So, I mean, I could almost walk there mm -hmm. from here. It's just not very far. It's very convenient. Yeah. yeah. But I won't walk there because mm -hmm. I'm not the kind of girl who'd walk. But. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> you just don't have your buddy to walk with you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but she's a really good, I, I think she's a good dentist and she's very, you know, one of the reasons uh, that I, put off going to the dentist for so long, other than cost, is pain. I don't mm -hmm. like pain. And so I always know if I'm going to go to the dentist, they're going to shoot me, they're going to pull a tooth, or they're going to fill a tooth, and there's going to be pain. And there's going to be uh, drilling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, the drilling, you can't ever feel it because they deaden you, but you can hear it, mm -hmm. and it sounds creepy. So I, uh, those types of things, you know, I really, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to encounter mm -hmm. them, so I just kind of put it off. Well, nowadays, I think that the technology is advanced to the point where.
When your yard needs a clean up and you need help, when your yard needs mowing and your neighbor's yard looks like this, your shrubs need some trimming, Wichita Lawn Care does it all. Commercial and residential lawn maintenance, fully insured, offering contactless billing to keep you safe. Fair, dependable, and on time, services to match the budget, excellent customer service, a Christian family business, highly recommended on Google. Wichita Lawn Care, LLC, owner Adam Fry, 316-393-4162. We take pride in what we do. Hair, that's our business. We're Riverside Hair Station at the corner of 11th and Bidding. We're a cool, funky salon with modern styles and a relaxed atmosphere. Locally owned and operated in the heart of Riverside. Specializing in all hair services, we also offer tanning, nails, massage, waxing, and makeup. Gift certificates are always available. So come experience Riverside Hair Station at 816 West 11th or call 264-4807. Closing a deal, that point when customers commit to buying whatever they're selling. Advertising sales agents sell advertising space to businesses and individuals to expand the public's awareness of products and services. They sell ads for online and print editions of publications such as radio, television, and more. Because their income and job security both depend on it, these sales agents invest a lot of their time building relationships with their customers. They research and analyze clients' needs and prepare creative, persuasive materials to encourage them to buy advertising. Many need to meet sales goals, so are continuously on the lookout for sources of new clients, making phone calls and office visits to interest them in advertising. Agents need to keep detailed contact and communication records and be prepared to draft advertising contracts for clients. They also need to represent their employer reliably and answer any questions a client may have. Good communication skills are essential for the field and a proven record of success in sales. Welcome back to Mother Buds. Um, give us a call if you know what, what time the ice cream social is on Wednesday uh, because my brochure doesn't tell me anything. There is an app. Uh, a mobile app that you can download on your phone. I haven't had time to do it yet. So if you've downloaded the app, you might have a schedule. Maybe you could call us and tell us what time the ice cream social starts. I have to rely on my viewers because I don't know anything. <laughs> um, Kim was talking, you know, the school shooting that happened over a week ago in um, Texas. Well, I guess it was a week ago today, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, it has opened up a lot of discussion on gun control again. Uh, we go through this every time there's a shooting. Um, but you had some interesting statistics there to read. Yeah, I can read. I think with the gun control thing, with, with the shootings that happen, is what they begin to do is play on the emotions of the parents, mm -hmm. and which is not the right thing to do. Because there are getting to be quite a few of the shootings, and it's like, kind of almost like let's amp them up so we can get more emotionally parents that are thinking about the gun control. Because automatically, if, a, if your child becomes deceased because of a gun, you don't want guns. Okay. Right. But it has nothing to do with the guns. That was, if it hadn't been the gun, it would have been something else right. that would have been used. But anyway, there's a blogger that put something pretty interesting together to make you think a little bit about the gun control. So I'll, I'll read this, see what y'all think. Um, there, a blogger added up the deer license sales in just a handful of states and arrived at a striking conclusion. There were over 600,000 hunters this season in the state of Wisconsin, over 600,000. Over the last several months, Wisconsin's hunters became the eighth largest army in the world. That's more men under arms than Iran, more than France, and Germany combined. These men deployed to the woods of a single American state, Wisconsin to hunt with firearms, and no one was killed. That number pales in comparison to the 750,000 who hunted the woods of Pennsylvania and Michigan's 700,000 hunters 
all of whom have returned home safely. Toss in a quarter million hunters in West Virginia, and it literally establishes the fact that the hunters of those four states alone will comprise the largest army in the world, and then add in the total number of hunters in, others, in the other 46 states. It's millions more. The point is, America will forever be safe from foreign invasion with what kind of homegrown firepower? Hunting, it's not just a way to fill the freezer. It's a matter of national security. That's why all enemies, foreign and domestic, want to see us disarmed. Food for thought. When next we consider gun control, whether you agree with it or not, Overall, it's true, so if we disregard some assumptions that hunters don't possess the same skills as soldiers, the question will still remain, what army of 2 million would want to face 30 million, 40 million, or 50 million armed citizens for the sake of our freedom? Don't ever allow gun control or confiscation of guns to happen. Yeah. You know, and I can't imagine, you, if you find some, some uh, person who's heavily armed, I mean, he's got lots of guns, he's got them maybe locked away in a gun cabinet, but he uses them when he, when he needs to, or when he goes hunting. Um, can you imagine how many people would be missing if somebody came out to get his guns? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely for protection because if they do do away with it, and we're getting ready to vote on certain parts of what they want to see done. I think one of them is uh, the one under the age of 21 uh, is allowed to um, own a gun. Own a gun. I don't have a problem with that. Uh -oh. So you don't? Yeah, I don't have a problem with that one. Um, I something about the ammunition. I don't have everything with me on that, but something about the ammunition. Um, needs to be um, locked up in a safe if it's not being used. They want to do away with all the clips. So if any guns have clips, they want to do away with the clips. Uh, any gun that is fabricated, like they do the 3D guns, mm -hmm. they, something that looks like a gun, they want to do away with that. So some of the things we kind of agree with, mm -hmm. but some things like actually taking the guns from us, no, yeah. we don't want to agree with anything. I don't, that. I don't think it can be done. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other one that stood out was um, if, like, say, a child does go in and confiscates the parent's guns and uses them in a crime, that parent, if it's registered in their name, will have up to five years in prison. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, and, and that's understandable because that parent uh -huh. has a responsibility to keep that weapon under lock and key. Uh -huh. I agree. Yeah. And unloaded. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. But, yeah, I, uh, there's so much about gun control that I that I disagree with. But the thing about coming uh, going after people's guns and trying to confiscate people's guns, I just don't think it can be done. You know, I and then we're going to create that other part of people wanting to be defiant about something that's ordered of them that they don't want to do anyways. And, and I just feel like it's going to create a, a, a another bigger issue. What is what's sad is they're not even doing anything about the real issue. Mm -hmm. They're taking it and running with a gun issue that has nothing to do with a child right. that had the mind to even do something like this, mm -hmm. or any of the adults or any of the other shooters that come into play. Mm -hmm. They're not addressing the real issue. It's not the gun. Well, that's the individual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's what's going on with that individual that needs. And the last thing in the world I want is for our our citizens to be unarmed. Right. Yes. I, I think that's the last thing in the world we want because if we're unarmed, we're vulnerable to mm -hmm. our own government or to uh, outside forces, mm -hmm. foreign foreign enemies. We're, we're vulnerable. We're, we've already got a president that's already wanting to give up our sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So do they take our guns? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're at a loss. Mm -hmm. We can't let that happen. So. You got to Okay. I, am I supposed to answer it? I'm not there. Well, one is. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we have a call. We're just waiting on the name, and then we will take the call on the air. So, um, but yeah, gun control is is a very emotional issue for a lot of people, and 
you, you'll find people on both sides of the issue, but I think you'll find more people on the side of, of uh, not having gun control as opposed to having it because nobody, I, I think a lot of people are just afraid of having us in a vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. And so. Kind of torn. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, and I, think I, think, both sides. I think we're the age that you're at. I think the younger generation and the parents are more torn versus mm -hmm. Our generation. Yeah. Right. Well, you have children in school. Yeah. Right. And and some of these kids that were killed in right. Texas were the kids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so I'm, I'm torn. Mm -hmm. and, and so, um, yeah. But they're, 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 they need to work on getting things put into place to protect the schools. Right. right. The children. Right. And they're not doing what right. needs to be done. Right. Let's go to line one and talk to Jane. Hi, Jane. Hi. Hi. What's Hi. on your mind? Well, I want to say thank you for bringing that up and um, reading that blog. It's, it's really a, an interesting subject. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a gun owner. I never have been. But I don't think that we should lose our ability to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we only have the dressing fact that you can always get um, guns and ammunition um, to the black market. Mm -hmm. And that's how, how do criminals get guns? Well, exactly. Because a lot of a, a lot of the people who have guns are felons. Well, you're not supposed to sell guns to a felon, mm -hmm. but how are they getting them? They're getting them somehow. Mm -hmm. Off the streets. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. Well, my understanding well, is that. Imagine, uh, I mean, what if the people who are crossing the border are also not only doing it in drugs, but they're doing it in arms? Well, um, there's a possibility. Very big possibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, okay to put on yourself um, as long as you're. You know, doing it illegally, um, I, I can't, I don't imagine like if I'm going to apply for a gun permit, I'm not going to, you know, do something to, uh, to harm someone, it would be to protect myself, or maybe if I had a, a home to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, most people that own guns um, own them for a, a reason. You know, they're collectors, or they are hunters, or they're just a gun enthusiast, and, and they just enjoy having guns. That doesn't mean that they're murderers. Exactly. That, that doesn't mean that they're, you know, but guns are becoming, they, they get into the hands of a person who, who will do harm to others, um, those are things that we need to try to figure out how to, how to stop doing. I don't think the answer is to take guns away from everybody. Mm -hmm. I think the answer is to try to put safeguards in place to, um, to try to, to keep these types of incidents from ever happening in the first place. I agree. But I'm, I'm a big opinion on why there's so many of the murderers, the shooters, you know, young men. What, what is um, happening with making these individuals become so disturbed that they can do something like that? You're talking about a younger generation that occupies their mind with video games, with 5G electronics, with the computer. They don't interact with other individuals, which for me is a mistake because God created us to be with others and not to be alone. And once you're alone, you're inside your own mind. And you can come up with all kinds of things that you feel like you can do mm -hmm. that you really should do. And that's what's happening with a lot of these younger children are being left alone. Mm -hmm. uh, they're being bullied. 
um, there's other issues that are going on with them that probably aren't being addressed whatsoever. And then with all of that and being left alone, there's probably going to be a lot more than what we're seeing right now just because of what's going on. And then the fact that you're talking isolation from COVID the last couple of years, mm -hmm. that really added to it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're probably going to see a lot more. So isn't there something that we can do in the schools or, you know, some kind of program for parents to, um, to be on the lookout for certain signs and do things to prevent this type of um, emotional um, decline to the point where I think that they're sociopaths become a psychopath? I mean, I, that's, I don't know. Okay. There's a program that I had that I actually work with teachers in schools to teach them, show them the signs to watch for. Because you can see this in a child's handwriting. So one, what we need to do is get God back in the schools. Two, we need to get the handwriting back in the schools because that creates empathy within the children. Mm -hmm. These children do not have any empathy within them right now. And that's what making or doing these crimes makes it very easy for them to do because there is no empathy. So get the handwriting back in, gone back in, quit with this crazy CRT and woke stuff, and teaching our children things that our children are at a very impressionable age when they're very young, and they're trying to tap in on that at this young age that messes with the mind of the child. And so we're going to end up with a lot of more mental issues than what we've already got with a lot of the things that are being taught right now. Well, and the, and the kids, the kids in the classrooms that witnessed all these killings, mm -hmm. um, they need some. They're going to need some serious counseling because mm -hmm. this is a really traumatic mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and then one, one thing with, because I've worked with a lot of forensic interviews and stuff with children that have gone through this stuff, and one thing that that you need to keep in mind is when a child talks about this you've just put it back into the subconscious and that child has relived it again. Uh -huh. So that is not the appropriate way to go through it. In order to get these children's minds back where they need to go, let them draw, let them write, mm -hmm. and see what's going on with them through the writing and through the drawings. And this is things that can be taught to teachers and counselors so they can mm -hmm. see these things. Just let them go that way. Don't let them talk about it mm -hmm. because that actually will instill more of the trauma back into the subconscious and then you live it again. Because your subconscious doesn't know um, reality from something that happened a while back. It doesn't know which way. It only knows that you're talking about it now. It happened to you again right now. So those emotions come back up all over again. Hmm. I don't know if that answers so I think that's one of your um, questions. Um, should we be contacting about the gun control issue. Do you think this is something in Georgia is pretty much um, as far as I can tell, it's pretty, um, you know, the defense yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I know that it's really going to have that thing change. I got a deal today that I think they're putting it before the Senate mm -hmm. real quick on stuff that they're voting on that they want to see happen with the gun control. So I know we are opposed to any change, I would probably all need to contact the elected officials and let them all hire it. Well, at least at the federal level. Well, I agree. I think they do need to be contacted because if they're silent and nobody contacts them, then they pretty much do what they want. Yeah. They vote in what they want versus what the other people want. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thanks for calling. Okay. Um, and again, we're still needing to know what time the ice cream social is next Wednesday. I, and I'm assuming it's Wednesday. It always has been. Unless they've changed it. This, this year has been kind of different, so yeah. I don't know. And I don't know if, I gotta look at this. If you bought your, your uh, button for the River Fest already, you probably got one of these brochures. 
don't think for a minute that that brochure is going to tell you what's happening <laughs> at the um, uh, Riverfest because there is no schedule of any kind on here. Nothing. Maybe not, they did it that way so you would have to download the app. Yeah. yeah, so I, I think if, if you want to know, see, to me it was nice to have both options. Yeah. Okay. You could have it on your phone and you could have it in your hand. Mm -hmm. And Sometimes uh, I prefer to be able to just hold it and look at the app versus my phone. It's different. Yeah. But this, there is no schedule in here whatsoever. So um, there's just a lot of useless, <laughs> useless information. Anyway, um, so we're still wanting to find out what time, what day, and what time the ice cream social is uh, next week. And I, it's traditionally it's always been on Wednesday, and I think it's around five or six in the evening. But I don't know. So, and, and that's been in the past. I don't know what it is this year. But we would, we're going to go, the three of us are going to go, and we would like to have our viewers, uh, if you see us out there, come talk to us because we want to we talk to you and we want to find out what kinds of things interest you, what kinds of topics you want to talk about. And if you have a business card, leave it with us. If you don't have a business card, uh, just write your name and, and phone number on a piece of paper and maybe a topic or two on there so we'll have an idea what, you know, what we talked about. <clears throat> and then um, we're going to give away a prize. We're going to draw for a prize on the following Wednesday during the show. And the prize is going to be a, a session? Yeah, you can get a session with Sarah. You can get a, a session with Sarah at Natural uh, Natural Grocers, and um, she, she can help you, she's a nutritionist, and she can help you design a diet that will help you with whatever kinds of uh, issues you might be having. I think that would be well worth it. Uh, I can work, uh, actually she puts, uh, well, before COVID, she even had cooking classes there at the store, which was mm -hmm. cool. And uh, she can help you. She's really knowledgeable with the vitamins, any nutrients that you need, or if there's something lacking in your body and you describe something to her, she's really good at pinpointing things and helping you to get the right things you need. Actually, with all the years I've been dealing with the estrogen issue, because I can't take um, compounding estrogen or any form of estrogen, and she actually found a plant-based form of estrogen that actually ended up working for me. And so she's really good at what she does. Yeah. She's really good. So, so that would and, be a and almost everybody has, almost everybody has some kind of an issue they might be dealing with. They might be diabetic, they might be hypertension, they might, they might have uh, heart disease, um, just any kind uh, of obesity. Mm -hmm. Obesity in, in and of itself can be a problem because it can lead to so many other things. So if you have in any of these conditions, uh, Sarah can probably help you. you know, I think the list is unending. Oh, I know. Help with sleep issues, mm -hmm. um, brain fog. Mm -hmm. I'm just totally amazed at what she does. She's just really, really I mean, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think she's became my new shrink. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to go see a shrink now. <laughs> well, um, our our health is in is an important part of our lives, and we don't value it that much when we're young. Mm -hmm. We think our, of ourselves as being invincible. Uh, you know, we're young. We're active. We're 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 just, we're invincible. Nothing's going to get to us. So as we get older and things don't work like they used to, and we're not reacting quite like we used to to different things, uh, we start to understand how important our health is. And I must be screwed up when people are So, but you know, most things can be correct. Welcome to 
to Jim Morgan's dry cleaning. We really appreciate your business. And we are Wichita. Jim Morgan's Fine Dry Cleaning is a full-service dry cleaner and shirt laundry specializing in high-quality and friendly customer service. We pay close attention to details throughout the entire dry cleaning process, and with over 30 years of experience in the industry, your garments will be clean and pressed to perfection. Jim Morgan's Fine Dry Cleaning is truly a full-service dry cleaner. We clean anything from suits, dresses, trousers, comforters, to draperies. What separates Jim Morgan's fine dry cleaning from the other dry cleaners is we only have one location, and Jim is here to on you personally and answer any questions, whether you're in our store or on the telephone. Jim, make sure personally that your special requests are taken care of. Your home is your castle and it's your biggest investment. It doesn't matter if it needs new exterior paint, new siding, a sunny new deck, a kitchen update with wallpaper removal, or new cabinets with a granite top. Your home can be like new with a paint job or flooring. With nine years experience and five years as a licensed insured business, Los Reyes Painting and Remodeling does residential or commercial work for a reasonable price. To get your free estimate to make your castle look like new, call 316-409-0002. Are you a victim of a high-pressure or dishonest timeshare sales agent? Were you misled and confused with what you were buying? Did the timeshare fail to deliver what you were promised? Do you feel that you overpaid and just want out? If you answered yes to any of these questions, we can help. We're Timeshare Compliance. Our team can legally terminate your timeshare agreement, ending the payments forever. With one simple call, we can help end the financial suffering. Call 800-230-3818. 800-230-3818. Welcome back to Maddie Vlogs. We've got, um, I think, roughly about uh, 20 minutes left in the show. So if you want to talk to us, give us a call at 316-337-5501. Um, <clears throat> we're still waiting for one of our viewers to look up the um, uh, Riverfest app. Download, you'll we'll probably need to download it and look it up and see if you can find a schedule of events. And we need to know when the, when the ice cream social is. I think it's on Wednesday. I need to know what time. So, <laughs> anyway. Because we're going to be there. there. We don't know what time. We need to know what time. I'll be there. Or anything, but we're going to be there. We're going to be there. Regardless. <laughs> anyway. So, somebody needs to go. Otherwise, I'm going to have to wait till after the show and, and take the time to download the app myself and, and do it myself. <laughs> I have but to do everything. You know you're acting like right now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's not the show right now. That's Linda. <laughs> we do have different personalities. <laughs> we, uh, we were, Ron and I were going into Quick Trip earlier this evening over here on Broadway and Murdoch, and there were three, I don't know if they were homeless or not, but there were three elderly people sitting out there, and, and they, were having, they were deep in conversation. And as we got out of the car, one of them looked at me and she goes, I love you, man. <laughs> and Ron said, are you talking to me? <laughs> Gosh, that <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I wrote her. Yeah, no kidding. What does that say? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Selective. 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 Yeah. I, I've been on to him for about a year and a half now. I already know. He was selective with me too. Yeah. He does that. Yeah, um, he has hearing aids, but he doesn't turn them on. Well, he hasn't. It, they have adjustments that you can make, and depending on where he is, like if he's in the car and he's got the window down, he has to adjust them way down because the noise is right. just really deafening. 
But if he's somewhere where there's background noise, then he has to adjust them a, a little bit different way in order to block out the, the background. background noise mm -hmm. so he can hear a conversation. But, you know, sometimes you just can't make those adjustments fast enough. Right. You know? Right. So, you would think with all of the stuff that they come up with, the technology. Yeah, but that, yeah. that, that would just be automatic. Yeah, it would yeah. Just on I think. And that's probably yeah. coming soon, but. <laughs> I don't think it should be coming soon. Well, it probably is in existence already, but nobody can afford it. Right, exactly. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. That's well, true. It seems to work really good on Alexa. We would think if they can get Alexa to do that stuff, that's true. Mm -hmm. that they yeah. should be able to do the hearing aids. And speaking of not being able to afford different things, I am going crazy about these gas prices. Oh, no. Yeah. It's, it's outrageous. Yeah. Outrageous. Like, I'm spending, like, at least $60. And, like, and I'm about 120 a week yeah. just to get to work and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. My kids are coming up from Texas, from New Texas, which is about a 12-hour drive. Mm -hmm. 800 miles, I don't really remember the mileage. So they're telling me that they're stocking money back, putting it in savings, hopefully to have enough just to pay for gas. Right. Here and back. Right. Yeah, so because yeah. it's it's just ridiculous. Yeah. I just by can't then, this is July. It could be right. right there. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Because I know I'll go to bed and then the next day I wake up and it's 15 more cents higher than it was before I went to sleep. It's crazy. We're not finding it, but here's. Some of the stuff that is in my Oh, okay. We haven't. Okay, there's the Riverfest Classic Car Show. That's on uh, Friday and Saturday, the 10th and 11th of June. Uh, Art Fest. Now, this is cool. They have the Art Fest at Riverfest, and that, they have that every year. And there's a lot of really talented people in, in okay. Wichita that participate in that. Um, fireworks, June 3rd and 11th. The first day and the last day. Uh, yeah. And uh, there's all kinds of music and concerts. Doesn't say when anyone else is. Um, yeah. It, uh, you didn't find it in here? Mm -hmm. Okay. They're real basic this year. Go to the river brown is the 4th. Downtown Get Down. What's that? And, uh, classic Car Show, June 10th and 11th. We talked about that. Art Fest, fireworks, more daily fun. <laughs> more daily fun. No mm -hmm. ice cream section? Oh, uh, there it is. I know there is, I just don't know. Click that music one and see if they have any info. Let's see if they have any info. There we ah, go. Willie Nelson, Saturday, June 4th. Oh, it's sold out. VIP yeah, tickets are sold out. Yeah, but you don't have to have a VIP. Yeah. Pardon? Where's the concert at? It's at. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. It, well, I'm sure it's out, but I don't know. Doesn't say. <laughs> Wednesday, June eighth. Okay, Wednesday, June eighth at six thirty is the ice cream social. So anyway, so we were located though. Okay, you know where Century Two is. Yeah, it's right outside. It, right there in front of Century Two. Okay, they had the big um, Highland truck. Okay. And comes in with the the freezer truck with mm -hmm. tubs and tubs and tubs of vanilla ice cream. Okay. And they set it out on a uh, on tables and the wagon masters serve it. Okay. And you can have all you want of it. You can go back however many times you want to and get more ice cream. Sure. I usually only get one, but <laughs> with your chocolate. With my chocolate syrup. <laughs> and all the concerts. You can do it. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, so if if you see us, 
at the ice cream social. We'll be out there by century two, somewhere. <laughs> um, and if you see us, stop by and say hello and uh, start up a conversation with us because we, we want to know what kinds of topics interest you, what types of things that you would like to talk about, and we want to know what you know, what types of, of, uh, what types of uh, topics you're an expert on that we might, we might want to have you come on and be a guest on the show to talk about that topic. So, um, you know, we would really like to get to know our viewers. You're yeah, well, welcome to call in and ask any of us questions. If it's not a topic that you know that you want to talk about, ask us questions. If there's something in our specialty field that we're in and you want to know something, ask. And if we don't know, we'll make something up. <laughs> we'll be making interesting when we do it. That's it. No. So anyway, there's a, there's a lot going on next next week, well, starting Friday, actually. There's the the parade, the Sundowner Parade, uh -huh. and then the, um, I think there's a fireworks after uh -huh. that. And a con is there a concert that night? Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't on the first night. So what do you think about the mosquitoes? I think you're I'm either by mosquitoes. I'm a mosquitoes. I've never had that be a problem at the River Fest. I don't know if they spray. I've never been to it, so I don't know. It's been I've a long time smelled. since I've been there. I've never had that problem, so I don't. I, I don't know. I just know they seem to be out in full force lately. They like you. <laughs> you know, it's not. I haven't even noticed. There's some <laughs> I think some people have a body chemistry that attracts bugs. Can you tell you attract something else besides mosquitoes? Mosquitoes? Yeah, the fireworks are usually uh, after, after, after the parade, mm -hmm. uh, long after the parade. The parade is around seven, I think, um, and it's usually pretty lengthy because uh, everybody wants to be involved in it. Mm -hmm. So it's usually pretty lengthy, and especially if the Shriners are involved in it, mm -hmm. because there's usually several groups of the Shriners, and they all have their mm -hmm. their displays. Mm -hmm. Do they have like school kids, and uh, what else do they have in the parade? Is there is there schools and there can be, yeah. I think there's marching bands and, and there's um, uh, different businesses might put together a float you know, and uh, politicians who might be running for office might be in there. Sometimes the big, uh, the big stars on the local TV stations like 310 and 12, they might have their people in a car, a fancy car driving around. And why aren't we in a fancy car? Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering on myself. <laughs> 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 Do you have one? I don't know how to complain. Um we have been known in the past, we've we've done this a long time ago. Um we used to take our our uh, a production vehicle or or a, a flatbed truck. And we would take all the people that that were involved with Channel Five. Or well, it, it, when we first went on the air, we were Channel Fifty Five, mm -hmm. and we would go uh, be in the parade, and we'd take a camera on the truck with us, and we would shoot the crowd uh, from the truck, and then we'd take that footage back to the station during one of our live shows. And, and play that and say this was our this was the parade from our perspective mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was kind of fun we'd, we'd ask people to call in if they saw anybody they knew or recognized <laughs> or if they saw themselves right that was kind of fun did they they didn't have one last year did they no last year's was more of a virtual um and it started later it started in august the end of August, didn't it? I don't remember. Because I got sick 
and I remember I didn't know I was sick sick and I came to work and I had a button. I think it was the end of August that it started last year. It started way later than but it was more of a virtual they didn't, they didn't have a lot of uh, activities that you could do yeah, in person and yeah, yeah. a virtual thing we there will be a lot more people out yeah, there will yeah. be mm -hmm. I'm sure yeah because uh, there were two years in a row that they didn't really do a live event to last year than the year before uh -huh. or did they even have one the year before yeah 2019 okay. Okay. they did they had a really uh, good festival in 2019 but 2020 and 21, uh -oh. because of COVID, they didn't really do anything in person. It, everything was virtual. You could go online and what fun. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Uh, no kidding. And and because of that, the um, uh, the uh, lady that used to work for the festival, who's not there anymore, but she was saying that be because of the fact that. The last two festivals were kind of a bust because of, of COVID. COVID. Um, but they had to raise the price of the buttons this year. How much are they this year? Fifteen. Wow. Fifteen for adults, five for children. Wow. Now the the price of the children's buttons hasn't changed. That's always been it's five. always been five. Yeah. But the adult buttons, if you bought them early, they were ten. But if you didn't buy them early, then now they're fifteen. So anyway, it's um, it, it costs a lot to put on one of these festivals, well, and, and then you consider the the quality of the concerts that they're having. You know, Willie Nelson. I mean, come on, that wasn't cheap. Uh -huh. um, so you can kind of understand why they have to charge that for the buttons. Um, but yeah, it's good for all week. Yeah, but that, um, yeah, it's all the, yeah, the, the entire thing. Yeah. Now, they have a food court that's uh, over there by Century 2, and it's set up. And you go and you buy, uh, you buy tickets for the food court in like $20. Increment. Well, you don't have to spend 20 but you're going you're gonna to anyway. Um, and you take your... The different food court vendors will have, uh, they take their tickets and they have a price sheet on all their items. It's prices in tickets. You don't buy anything with cash, you use your tickets. And um, it's kind of pricey, but you know, it's once a year, so it's, you're going to eat a lot of, uh, you're going to see a lot of foods or cuisine that you don't see ordinarily and you're going to want to sample it. So, what the heck? <laughs> I feel like we need ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that ice cream is going to cost you $15, keep in mind. I yeah, know, I was thinking about that and she said, that's a pretty expensive yes. <laughs> cup of ice cream there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, but, and, and there again, you know, um, for a family, you know, for one person it's probably not so bad, but for if you take a family who, well, for instance, your family, you've got... Oh, well, they'll be staying at home this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the price of you, of you, you could send three of them. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like, Mom will be over here. <laughs> Go enjoy yourself. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you, when you consider a family, a lot of times, uh, after the price of the buttons, mm -hmm. then you've got the, the food at the food court. Don't they have rides to there? Uh, Doesn't the River Fest have rides? Well, yes and no. There are rides usually there, but it's not part of the River Fest. Oh, I see. It's, okay. it's another group that comes, comes in at the, about the same the time. Yes. Yeah, over where? By the Hyatt. Oh, by the Hyatt? Mm -hmm. Okay. And there is a Wichita drone show presented by Exploration Place Saturday at 10 p.m. Okay, so, so there's a drone show on Saturday at 10 p.m. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. And that's mm -hmm. where? <laughs> None of these say where they're at. Just oh. it doesn't say where the Willie Nelson concert is, and that's at 9. Okay. 
So, you know, uh, the thing of it is, uh, it, part of yeah. it, you have to download the app. Yeah, you have to download the app, and, and even when you download the app, you're not, you're not getting, uh, yeah, you're not getting the whole picture. Surely, as it gets closer to the event, they will fine tune that that app, don't you think? I hope so. I hope so, too. Yeah, social is at 6.30. Like I say, it doesn't say where it is. Well, it's always in front of Century, too. Yeah. And they have the big Highland truck. Uh, you know, you'll see, yeah, you see the Highland truck. You can't miss that. You'll know that the ice cream is close by. And I always take chocolate syrup with me because I like it and I will share. <laughs> I will share my chocolate syrup. And it's the dark chocolate. So yeah, this is who's on Cheryl the button of the moon. Yeah, this is Cheryl. This is Cheryl sharing. She's the yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm generally not in Linda mode, but, you know, <laughs> once, <laughs> once in a while, <laughs> once in a great while, if provoked. <laughs> <laughs> surely not. Don't call me Shirley. Oh, well, you said Shirley not. I didn't call her Shirley. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. So that, that, is, that is my my kind of special joke because a lot of times people use that expression, Shirley yeah. mm -hmm. And I'm always going, when I was in school, because my name is spelled with an S, uh -huh. the teachers always wanted to make, call me Shirley. And I'd say, don't call me Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when Linda came out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then they also, my last name was Carson. Mm -hmm. But they always tried to put an L in there and make it Carlson. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, no, my family got the L knocked out of us a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just Carlson. <laughs> I used to tell people, when I got into high school, I used to tell people that Johnny Carson was my uncle. Uh -huh. There were some people that believed me. I didn't expect it. I thought that I knew I was full of crap. <laughs> some people did believe me, so, okay. Anyway, we've wasted about an hour's time now. <laughs> um, I had a phone call. Well, yeah, we did have a phone call. We really appreciate that. Um, we'll be back. In two weeks, we'll be back on Mallee Broads at 7 p.m. Uh, right here on 5.2. We hope you join us. In the meantime, look for us next Wednesday evening at the um, Ice Cream Social. Come talk to us. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Chief Meteorologist at Newsnet. Ned Newsnet is working around the clock to bring you the latest weather conditions right where you live and around the country. We're using the latest technology to bring you those conditions. If it's rainy, sunny, or even severe, you'll be prepared. Tune into Newsnet for the latest weather forecast at 12 and 42 past the hour around the clock, only on Newsnet.